what stands out as far as what you're going to have to stop as, as a secondary? I just know as a whole they're going to be a well-coached team. You know, Mike Riley always did a good job of preparing his teams. They're going to run the ball, got three good running backs, and then quarterback who can throw it pretty good. Um, and uh, they got receivers who can make some moves and run after the catch, so we got to stop everything. Does it help at all that you kind of know how Coach Riley ticks when you're, when you're preparing for this game? I'm not in his head. I don't know. It, may, it doesn't matter what I know. It matters what I can communicate my guys to execute. So it's going. the players on the field are going to make the plays. Communication was a big issue last year on the secondary. Obviously, you weren't here. But this year, did you just feel like week one communication was pretty elite for you guys? I don't want to say it's elite. It was it was okay, but we're just trying to get better every week. But it was all right. There was there was a gap between your pro career and your coaching career when you got that GA job. What were you doing in between? How did Riley convince you to join that staff? I was I was selling cars. Uh, it was at Thomas and Toyota up in uh, Gladstone, and um, just coming down and meeting with him and Banker and talking to the guys and about football. And then they kind of just told me I should, I should try coaching. I'd be really good at it. And my first response was like, "You work. You guys work too much." But uh, eventually, I I did it, <laughs> and I started coaching. Are there any carryover, any similarities between how you sell car and how you coach defense? No, not really. <laughs> Maybe in recruiting. You're persuasive. <laughs> Maybe in recruiting, but that's in sales and anything. You have to find out what the people want. Yeah. Got next to the long hours. Oh yeah. I mean, it's this is football. I don't, the hours aren't long. I'm having fun every day coaching football, so it's not really long anymore. <laughs> Mike Johnson said that when he was on Riley's staff, when he brought him into his first coaching job, he basically taught him how to coach. Do you feel like, in some ways, Riley gets some credit like that for you too, where he just kind of taught you how to look as a coach? Absolutely. No, without a doubt. You know, with him and Mark Banker, who I was up under, I mean, I spent a lot of time in just the detail and the organization and the teaching. You know, that's something that will stick with me forever as a coach. What, what is the hardest thing for a guy who's accomplished as a player that you were, but to go to his coach, is there, what's the learning curve like? What's the hardest thing to grasp? To be able to teach, because it's one thing to be able to go out there and do it. You know, it's a lot of people who can do a lot of things, but to be able to teach someone else how to do that, um, that's what coaching is, is teaching. Yeah. And, and why is Riley so good at teaching? Clearly he's been successful. What makes him, how does he teach? I mean, he has a lot of experience behind him, um, and he has a system that he carries with him no matter where he is. He's good at recognizing the talents of his players and putting those guys in position to, to be successful um, and, uh, you know, just being simple and allowing guys to play fast.